Hi, I'm Danny Varek Spit. I'm here to talk to you about functional strength a little bit. So as you can tell, I'm on my computer right now and we're just finishing up a blog on the five best things you can do at home. And I realize this is a very, very covered topic in fitness, but we're gonna cover that in the RX Fit approach, right? Everyone seems to talk about it in their own uh, way when it comes to like losing weight, getting muscle. But the way we approach things is through the functional strength portion. That way you can hit your goals and feel awesome along the way. So um, I have Bobby Bones here helping me to demonstrate some of my uh, movements and why they're so important and impactful for your life. Now this is for those people who are essentially are sitting a lot like I currently am. Um, surprisingly, even though I'm a personal trainer, I do spend a lot of my time sitting still in front of a computer right here, uh, doing my programming, you know, doing video content like this, uh, you know, working with my team virtually. This is kind of a lot of stuff that goes on. So I do know firsthand the stuff that you do run into as well, right? Um, actually, I'm realizing the correlation a lot more and more as more I sit up more often, what I'm running into. So these five exercises are designed to combat those things specifically, the sitting process, uh, and on top of that, not just to reduce pain in the future, but to increase overall energy. As you may know, if you don't, uh, when you release, release these muscles that are very tense, a lot like the hip flexors over here, quads in the front of the leg, uh, sometimes even calves, you release that tissue, you open it up a little bit more, a lot more blood to flow freely, you actually have more, a lot more energy to go on and do stuff that you wanna do, right? So that's kind of how I focus with a lot of my functional strength approaches, um, or as we call it here, corrective fitness. And the very first one is an example of that, one of my personal favorites, uh, the genie sit. So genie sit, and for all these, by the way, all these exercises, you'll have a GIF somewhere around me, maybe over my face, that will be showing you the movements uh, over and over while I talk about it a little bit. So the genie sit, let me pull uh, my bones up. Uh, as you're seeing in the GIF right now, it seems like you're just bending, bending over, hands on the ground, and then you're walking yourself out into a plank, and then you walk yourself back up, and then to stand. That is the case. What you're focusing on is you don't want to hyperextend your knees. This is where the, most, the action happens. You want to have what's called, what I call a soft knee. So it's like slightly bent, just a little bit, just not locked down, that's all it is. You don't want to, but as you bend over, you don't want to just bend your knees as much as you can, like a squat, right? Uh, that is gonna help, dis that's gonna happen, it's gonna disengage all this back here and kind of ruins the point of a genie sit. A genie sit is like the mobility version of an RDL. Uh, it attaches all this back here, this kinetic chain, and if you do the genie, the... It was at oh, this moment that he sir. knew he fucked up. <laughs> the genie sit. I'm talking about the inchworm right now. <laughs> On the inchworm, uh, the inchworm all through here, uh, as you're going through it, uh, the, the motion, it's designed to connect all this kinetic chain here and open it up as forcefully. So when you bend over, your weight here, as you start to bend over, you'll start to feel your calves, your hamstrings, your back, and then you walk yourself out into a plank and then walk yourself back up into standing. That is the inchworm. Uh, it's the most important thing is like if you feel the chain all the way down. If you can't get all the way to the ground when you bend over, it's fine, bend your knees more until you can reach the ground. But the idea is that you wanna feel it all on the backside the entire time, okay? Then you have the genie sit which is, starts on your knees, here, and you'll be on the ground, and you're just going to cross your arms in front of you and lean back as far as you possibly can. Keeping your hips, see how straight that is right there, those hips? It's not hunched like this as you're leaning back, you're completely locked out. So that way you lean back, and then you come forward again like this, you feel it in your core and the quads, the front of your legs. That is the absolute magic here. So, let's look at that for a second. It's really hard to control body bones. I need some ligaments. All right, here. When, if you look at the front there, where those quads are, those are getting pulled on a lot. The hip flexors, the lower part of the abdominals, all the way through the transverse rectus abdominis, all the way through here, through the ribcage. And you use all those muscles to pull yourself back up. This is a great one for sitting down a lot because you're doing the exact opposite position of sitting. See, like sitting is here, there, and Genie sit is here, and you're leaning back, putting all the stress on the front, the anterior part of your leg, as you pull it back up. So that is the uh, essentially the benefit on the genie sits. It's a movement I kind of do a lot for people who are doing squat day, or we're prepping for that, or if someone just sat, honestly, just had like a long week in the office, like 60, 70 hours, and I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and knock that out and engage all of this and help break up the tissue that is tight. So the idea is you want to engage the stuff you really, really want to improve on, so the core, and then you want to release the muscles that are holding you back, right? They're too tight. 
uh, or compress or overactive. So, uh, and release those. And ideally, if you're really good, you'll do them at the same time, like the Genie Sit, which is why it's a top five favorite of mine for uh, being at home and kind of correcting your problems. Third one, Bulgarian split squats. I have to say before I talk about too much about Bulgarian split squat, it is easily one of my favorite movements. Um, top three for me personally in every respect. Not corrective exercise, not functional strength, just everything. Uh, every single time I do a body day, um, I use it personally all the time. Uh, when I want to build strength in my legs, when I want to build mobility in my legs, everything. I mean, honestly, I, I love hitting mobility and strength at the same time. So we would put your back leg on a either a stable or unstable sur surface. I like unstable, it makes me work a lot harder. Put your foot on there, like a chair, and then you're just going to split go up the back. Again, you're gonna see the GIF. It, I'll be demonstrating a little better in the GIF than I am here with Bobby Bones, because I don't have more arms to control of his limbs. But essentially, here, and you go to go down, and you see that lead leg there? It's, it's was lunged. Come on, buddy. Listen to me. There you go. And here, so when you're in this bottom position, this is great. This is you have big, big, big stretch in the left quad here, the one that's on the chair. And if you're sitting up straight, instead of leaning forward, you'll also feel it in your core. So through the quad, just like kind of we just talked about with the genie sit, except now you're doing a more strength, strength focused approach, right? And then you push through both legs to stand all the way back up, foot is still on the object, and you lunge back into it again, right? So ideally, sit up straight as much as you can, if you don't feel anything in that position, um, you either have to like lean further back or try to engage your glute more by like squeezing it. Now, Bulgarian split squats. Highly recommend it. Use it all the time, all the time. And then kickouts. Kickouts. It's a, this. Now we're trying to get your endurance up, right? Uh, we're trying to get your heart rate up. We're trying to uh, essentially activate some power. Now, it's funny I said that because if you notice there's five exercises, the thing we talk about all the time are five modalities. And if you may have noticed, every single one of these follows each modality I talk about. Genie sits, the first one was is more of a mobility approach, right? It's increasing range of motion under tension. Inchworms uh, is increased stability, right? Inchworms are a little bit more difficult, especially if your feet narrow, in order to engage those muscles under an unstable environment. Bulgarian split squats, putting a lot of force on the, on the muscles, right? Because in the split squat position, your entire body weight is on one leg as opposed to on both. So it's a lot more force that we did. Kickouts or the power version, right? It's how fast you can release that sport. It's a force. It's all about speed at that point or explosiveness. Uh, and the last one, what we get into in a second, will be endurance when we get to that one. But keep in mind, I'm always thinking in those, in those modalities because that's how you get the most efficacy out of the muscles, right? So kickouts, bend over at the waist, like so. And then you're going to jump into a plank and then jump back, with your feet under you, and then stand up, right? So it's kind of like a burpee, but there's no push up at the bottom and there's no jump at the top. Right, so like the, uh, at the top of a burpee, like when you're standing back up, people like to like leap up in the air with their hands, like woo. We're not doing that. This is just a kick out. Kick out is bend over, hands on the ground, jump into a plank, bring your feet back under, stand up. Right? And just again, you'll see it in the GIF. Uh, so a little bit more power focus, getting the endorphins up because we're forcing a lot more blood through the body. And as the body develops a little pain because of the tension, you start to release endorphins, which is a painkiller, and then you'll feel awesome. And the last one are plank hip taps. So now that we've gotten, we've worked the muscles almost every single time in every single modality, we're gonna finish off a little bit of endurance to get the blood completely flowed and to really mostly burn glucose. So your plank like this, this is gonna be really hard for Bobby. I think you could do it. We'll see. So you're in a plank here. And the idea is imagine there is one dot underneath your belly button on the ground. And you're trying to hit that one dot on the belly, with your belly, I mean, in front of your belly button on the ground with one hip at a time, but the same dot, all right? The idea is you're gonna twist your hips and then drop, oh, he's having trouble going down, <laughs> and then dropping to touch that spot on the ground, lift back up, and then twist with the other side, and then drop back down. So it's just the hip that is turning on each side to hit that spot on the ground, all right? And do that over and over, and you'll feel the core a lot more. By this point, you've already worked your core, a lot of your glutes back here, your hamstrings, you'll start to feel that, start to burn a little, little bit. And we're not trying to go crazy here, we're trying to fix your body and uh, develop a strong functional sound body. Also, at the same time, make sure that you stay loose, limber, and you have a, more energy through reducing your restriction. That is the key component there. Increasing your energy, but not by giving you like more ATP, right? More glucose. It's, more, it's about reducing the amount of friction that you have on your body, the amount of tension that's pulling you down. This, Bobby Bones is lucky here because he doesn't have any bands on his body that's slowing him down. Uh, but the rest of us have a bunch of resistance bands called muscles on our bodies to hit there. And the more we use them, the tighter they get. So really important 
to make sure to keep those muscles mobilized and loose and you'll feel like you have more energy. It might even increase your strength depending on if it helped optimize your positioning, your mechanic. All right, hopefully that all helped you. Um, there's a blog associated to this if you wanna get more in detail about every single thing I just talked about here. Uh, and until next time. Thank you.